When I was around 16 years old, my father introduced me to a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This book was a real estate book that he told me and said that it changed his life 15 years ago and that he hopes that it would help me get a better idea of what money is. I hated reading with a passion. I was terrible at it. I was slow. I just, I, I just wasn't, I'm not a reader. Never was a reader. Now that has changed. Now I am a reader. Before, I wasn't. But I looked up to my dad. I always did. He's a smart guy. He's done well. He's got a good business. And specifically, I was interested in real estate. And it's one of the reasons why he gave me that book. So I started reading it. And as I was reading it, obviously being very slow with it, I started to pick out points. And really the basis of the book, to sum it up, if you haven't read it, highly, highly, highly recommend it. But if you haven't, to sum it up, he had a rich dad who was a dad who owned his own business, who paid himself first, who owned assets instead of liabilities, and he had a poor dad, who in society's eyes would be the rich dad, and this would be the poor dad. But this poor dad, he was a principal. He went to college, and he got a good college degree. He got into a solid job. He had good benefits. He lived a stable life, but he was poor. And why was this? Well, because he was controlled. And so this, this book, it opened my mind up. And then I started like, because I don't like reading, so I started looking at YouTube videos. And I always watch like video games on YouTube. So I'm like, I wonder if there's like money stuff on YouTube. Sure enough, I came across a guy named Graham Stephan. I'm sure you probably are familiar with him. Graham Stephan started talking about real estate as well. And then that real estate loophole led me into financing and budgeting and stock market and all of this stuff revolving around money where I genuinely became interested in making money. Around this time, I started developing a drop shipping store and started like venturing into e-commerce and, and I'm 17 years old at this point, right? In my plan, Everything, like I had it all in my head. I'm like, I need to start generating income now. So when I get into college, I will have the freedom to do whatever I want. Financial freedom to do what I want. Right, so at 16, 17 years old, I was planning for this. Sure enough, I get into college. I don't have near as much money as I wanted to, but I had enough. Right? I started saving enough where I had enough to where I, I was able to invest that. So that's what I did. I invested it. During this time, the pandemic happened, right? Well, the stock market completely tanked. Completely. Luckily, I hadn't invested everything. For some reason, I kept some stuff on the sidelines, some cash. And so I flooded it into the market at that point. Because, I mean, heck, uh, as Warren Buffett's quote goes... Buy when the streets are bloody, right? So, yeah, there was blood in the streets. So I started buying things up. Inevitably, this rebounded like that. Was it luck? Probably. But it did. And from that, I made a decent living, decent amount of money from it. And I say this to tell you, that my 20s, I thought were going to be set up for greatness. I thought my 20s were going to be uh, a time in which I was fully, like had all of this wealth and able to just go and be free and do what I want, right? Little did I know that I would learn valuable lifelong lessons that have to do with finance, 
have to do with income, money, building a business, all of the above. And then I started to get in a grind, right? Where I had all this money and I lost a little bit of it, but I wanted more and I just wanted, and so then I would just, I would like hold myself down and, and just like really and truly like just compromise my character, the person who I was, because I wanted to hoard this money to myself, keep it all. Like I, I need more. I need to accumulate more. And so I would lose friendships. I would, I would mitigate, uh, and, and just wouldn't go to different events or th- interactions and things to like meet new people. I, I wouldn't do that because I would be spending more money. And I'm like, I don't want to waste my money on that. No, I'm just going to stay inside and just eat ramen noodles. And this frugality mindset began to occur, began to accumulate, and began to really take over my life. To where my friends started to refer to me as the moocher. And gladfully so, because like... I was a moocher. I would take things from them and utilize them for myself, for my own personal gain and wouldn't think to give anything back because I wanted more money. I needed more stuff. And so I started to see my relationships deteriorate. The friends, the people, the family members that I had that would count on me I started losing those friends. And I realized that your 20s are not the time to chase money. Really and truly, there is no point in your life when you should chase money. It's very similar to chasing girls. Any girl that sees and smells desperation from you is turning the other way because she knows her value is higher than yours and so she does not want to get with someone who is a lower value than she is. The same concept comes with money. See, why I was chasing after this money and chasing after more and more and trying to accumulate all this to myself, what I was doing is I was actually losing. I was losing out on a life of what I could have had if I had an abundant mindset. One in which the money was no factor. See, instead of desperately chasing to pay for this vacation so I can have the freedom or pay for this food or go out with these friends, instead of desperately having money before so then I could go do those things, no, instead just going and doing them and ensuring that the money will come because I live in abundance. See, money will come. You will have the resources that you need in your life. I say this as a Christian, as a believer that God will provide the resources that we need to live our rightful paths. Chasing money in your 20s will lead you to a life of desperation, sorrow, shame, guilt, sadness, and all of these low vibrations. If you live in abundance, a life of abundance, one in which money, things, items flow to you, you can then go out and enjoy those vacations. You can go with friends to wherever you may want to go. Go out and eat, have a nice dinner, enjoy your life a bit. And what's going to happen is then you're going to utilize resources that and opportunities that were created because of those events to 
add you and push you to higher stakes, higher stratospheres that you never even thought would be possible. Chasing your money in your 20s is a scarcity mindset, one in which it's eat or be eaten, an eye for an eye. This is a survival instinct. Today, you don't have to survive. See, in the modern age that we live in, we can thrive on this earth. Quit chasing money and instead understand that you will be okay. You can live in abundance and truly live a great, great life. So if you're in your 20s, go out, experience new things, go have some fun. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. And I promise I'm still going to be here. I'll continue to be here for each one of you guys. Take it easy. Peace.